right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Hopefully you guys are having a great rest of your day, start of your day, whatever time it may be. And in this video, we are gonna be talking about the all new 2025 Ford Mustang GTD. Some more information on the supercar killer has been revealed and it's quite interesting because in my personal opinion, it makes the 1314 Shelby GT500s even more desirable than they already were. I will explain later in this video why I believe that. So with all that being said, feel free, drop a like on the vid, subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications, and let's get on the way. I figure since we are talking about supercharged 5.2 liter V8 Mustangs, we'd go out in the Shelby GT350. It is very hot out today. It's almost 100 degrees, so hopefully uh, my GoPro doesn't overheat too much. Three, two, one. I actually did take the car out a little bit earlier, so we're not gonna have to sit here and uh, warm it up all day. My tire's at 14 PSI. For the most part, we are almost like, eh, no, we are. Yeah, we warmed up. <laughs> We're already warmed up. Ugh. Good old 93 octane. Got that really pungent smell. Got our free bright check. I killed a family of bugs. It's all good. Alright y'all, I'm gonna let the RPMs drop and we're gonna take off. Alright, we are on the road. Now before I start talking about the Ford Mustang GTD, let me know down in the comment section right now, what are your opinions on this supercar killer? Do you guys think it's worth it. You guys think it's not worth it. Is it going to live up to the hype? Because the information that was just recently revealed is quite interesting. Now, if you guys are unaware, the Ford Mustang GTD is going to be pushing out 815 horsepower, 664 foot pounds of torque, and it is gunning for a sub seven second Nurburgring ring time. That guy is flying. Whatever's going on, I'm glad I'm going the opposite direction. This car is, like I said, Ford's supercar killer. It is designed to go after a lot of the Porsches and also a lot of the other higher end vehicles that you would typically see on the track. It's a street legal track weapon. Now, the GTD Mustang, Mustang GTD, honestly, I'm really confused as to why they decided to strap Mustang to this. I think they should just call it the Ford GTD, just like how they called it the Ford GT. This is essentially not trying to be your typical Mustang where it's a one trick pony because we all know Mustangs nowadays, they're built for straight line, or handling it's like one or the other if you're looking for a handling mustang odds are you're gonna be looking for an older boss 302 mustang a shelby gt350 a mach 1 or now a mustang dark horse and if you're looking for straight line performance you're looking for the 10 or 80 mustang or potentially if you want the prestige you're going to be getting an s550 shelby gt500 but in all reality, we all know you can go faster in a 10 or 80 Mustang. But this is kind of where I have a problem. Well, there's another cop up there. This is where I kind of have a problem with the Ford Mustang GTD. The 300K price tag is incredibly, incredibly steep. Now I'm gonna break down why I believe it's 300K and why I have a problem with that because bro this guy is tailgating please get away from me it, like where are you going bro jesus christ and why and you yeah dude you're going nowhere <laughs> i don't get it but like i was saying why have a problem with it now with the ford mustang gtd it has the state-of-the-art multi-matic suspension which is going to be enabling it to essentially 
outhandle a lot of the competition or it's supposed to be enabling it to outhandle a lot of the competition example a lot of the Porsches out on the market now this Mustang like I said 815 horsepower 660 four foot-pounds of torque and it also has a top speed of 202 mile an hour now if you guys have been you know following Mustangs for a while the 2013-14 GT500 has the same top speed and that is a sixth of the price or I should say a fifth of the price excuse me depending on the mileage and how you you know spec it out has way less technology as well as a manual transmission in my personal opinion this Ford Mustang GTD just went ahead and jacked up the value of the 1314 GT500 because in all reality your average Mustang owner is is not buying the car for it to be like an absolute handling dream I think a lot of us like to have you know the best of both worlds but in all reality you know mustangs you know they're they're straight line monsters you know what i'm saying the reason i bought the shelby gt 50 is because like it, it was a mixture of like everything and it was for the most part affordable you know you can buy a shelby gt 350 for fifty thousand dollars right and handles pretty well and if you boost it it's good in a straight line and it has a manual transmission. That Ford Mustang GTD has a $300,000 price tag on it and top speed is the same as the 1314 GT500 with, like I said, way less technology, a manual transmission, and also a fifth or a sixth of the price depending on the mileage and how you get it spec'd out. It's just kind of interesting to me and I feel like a lot of people are I'm not gonna be say upset about that but very confused as to why it has the same accolades as a car that came out you know a decade prior <laughs> for a fifth or a sixth of the price Now, something else I kind of want to go ahead and touch up on with the Ford Mustang GTD, and honestly, Fords in general, and this is going to be the huge issue I have with the price tag, is that I personally don't believe any Ford is worth $300,000. Now, again, I understand this car has a lot of technology. It's not going to be a one-trick pony, and it's going to on paper outperform every Mustang that has released prior to it but for $300,000 if you are actually looking for a certified like track weapon I don't think anybody that can afford a $300,000 car is going to be buying a Ford you know what I'm saying it just it just kind of doesn't make sense to me obviously this is going to be a limited run vehicle 
you have to have an allocation to get it and the people who are obviously applying for the allocation want to own the car to have a piece of history but if they don't hit that sub seven second nurburing time i feel like a lot of people are going to be really upset and just questioning why is this car worth 300 grand why is it going for 300 grand because we all know it's going to be jacked way up if somebody decides to you know sell it which is obviously going to happen we're going to see these for literally half a million dollars i guarantee it maybe two weeks after they you know start being shipped out to people who you know have you know allocations that got accepted it's gonna be crazy now the build quality you know for ford it's, it's just not there man i mean you're not necessarily buying a ford for the build quality but for 300k it just i have a problem with it because number one in my personal opinion just based off the accolades and and what the car is you know on paper going to be doing this is essentially what an 80 to 85 thousand dollar mustang with a body kit and over 200 grand in suspension r d as well as technology behind it now here's the other thing about the gtd that i kind of have an issue with because we all know it's going to happen it happened with the s650s it's been happening with the s550s i mean it's it's insane the gtd is going to have essentially the same build quality as a thirty thousand dollar eco boost right we're gonna have panel gap we're gonna have headlight gap there's gonna be creaks in the interior it's just guaranteed to happen you know my s650 creaks in the interior sometimes but again it's a ford it's not a big deal i'm not buying a ford for the build well you're not buying the you're not buying a ford for the interior build quality right you know there's going to be some compromises made you're buying it for the raw performance but again it's because the vehicles are on the affordable side of the raw performance right you know what i'm saying like for 40 50 grand you can get a brand new Mustang that's gonna make almost 500 horsepower that you can make a thousand horsepower with forced induction and go out and destroy other cars that have a hundred grand under the hood that also start at a hundred grand you know that's fine but when we're talking about a car that costs 300 grand just to get into that's gonna have the same issues as the thirty thousand dollar eco boost brand new it's just it's really weird because the s650 has got the headlight gap some of them have like the weird just crumbling fenders i've seen the rear fenders be kind of just i just i don't i don't understand like it's just a lot of things are are, are, are weird <laughs> on some of the s650s that i've seen that i already know for a fact is gonna happen with the gtd so that's kind of the issue that I have with it. This guy right here, what's going on? See, that California Special's clean. You know what I'm saying? You don't see that for 300 grand. You know, <laughs> you know, you can make that California Special faster than the GTD for way less than 300K. It just, I mean, it don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me. Again, I'm not hating on the GTD. I'm just hating on the price. A few moments later. All right, I have to pull over. It is insanely, insanely hot out. I knew this was gonna happen because of all the on and off raining we had for like the past two weeks. All that did was heat up the air. <laughs> so now it's 97 out, feels like 107 out. And GoPro's overheating, it's crazy, man. But I also wanna go ahead and put this out there. No, I'm not hating on the GTD. It's a beautiful car, it's badass. I just can't get behind that price because 300K, that's insane for a Ford. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's crazy for a Ford. Absurd for a Ford. Whew, I'm about to blast the AC and head back home for real. It's just, <laughs> it's bad. Whew. Like somebody used to tell me, what makes you want to buy the GTD over the new C8Z 
or one that's going to release. What makes you want to buy a GTD over, let's say, an S550, a GT500 that you can add some modifications to? You know? Because if I'm looking for a dedicated track vehicle, I don't know if I'd be going for a Ford. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that has a huge, huge sway on the vehicle that I'm going to be going to be purchasing. Because for 300k, I mean, there's a lot of other options you can get. And I mean a lot of other options you can get. Oh, this AC feels so good. Thank you, Boyd, for fixing this. <laughs> It's like the first time I've run the AC in a very, very long time, too. I usually don't run it, but, dude, I got to today. It's bad. And it's been a minute since I've done a forward-facing cam in the Shelby, too. That's how you know the video is serious. Come on now. I picked the perfect time to come out in rush hour traffic. But we'll have to see what happens in time because if they can knock that sub seven second nerve ring time. back at the casa let me know down in the comment section what you guys think about the ford mustang gtd is it worth three hundred thousand dollars or is it not worth three hundred thousand dollars i think a lot of people are going to say it's not i'm really curious to see exactly if they can crack that sub seven second nurburing ring time and hopefully you know we'll see some of them out on the road and they won't be one of those cars where they're just bought garage kept you don't really see them and then they're resold for 500 grand even though I think that's probably what's gonna happen because 500 grand, 300 grand for a Ford Mustang, that's crazy because it's not the Ford GT. This is a Ford Mustang GTD. I don't know. We're gonna have to see exactly what the future holds. So if you guys enjoy, feel free, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, turn those post notifications, and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one, y'all. Deuces.